US stocks continue to make record highs and look more and more overvalued by the day. On the other hand, Chinese stocks keep going down and look more and more undervalued by the day. But have Chinese stocks finally bottomed? And are US stocks near a top? Well, let's find out in this video. As the US bull market enters its second year, it looks pretty relentless. In fact, in the last five months alone, it has been almost one straight line up. And if you take a look at from the time the bull market started in October of 2022, that was over a year ago, uh, it's up about, yeah, from there, it's about up about 32%, the S&P 500. And if you actually add dividends, it's up close to 40%. And that's just the S&P 500. The NASDAQ is up double that, it's like 50, 60%. And especially some stocks like uh, our Magnificent 7. Well, you're going to kick Tesla out now, it's Magnificent 6. Um, Nvidia is up kind of like, whoa, look at that. Nvidia's up like since a year ago, it's up 226%. You know, stocks like Meta, all the AI related stocks is up 175%. You know, Microsoft is up, let's see, you know, 72%. Now in my Market Outlook webinar coming up this weekend, I'll talk a lot more about my specific outlook and expectations for the rest of the year. But I can tell you in general, I do expect the end of 2024 to end up higher than where we are right now, above 5,000 points on the S&P 500. But having said that, remember that stock prices do not go up in a straight line. They go through wave patterns. So uh, right now you can see, if I go to the daily charts, you can see you know, you have a strong wave up there and a wave down. And now we're in a process of a wave up. So again, you can't wave up forever. Eventually, this wave up is going to wave back down. You go through a healthy correction, health, healthy pullback, back to at least the 50 moving average, or even maybe lower if it's a deeper correction, before heading higher uh, in the second half of the year. Of course, everybody would love to know where's the intermediate top. Are we near the top? Is the US market going to correct soon? Is it going to go down soon? And no one can predict for certain because there are too many moving parts and you never know what's the catalyst that's going to trigger this pullback or correction. But using some technical analysis, Fibonacci, we can make some educated guesses and get a rough idea where the top could be and where it could correct down to. So let me show you how I would make some guesses from this. And again, it's just a guess. No one knows for certain, right? So. I'm looking at the S&P 500. I'm looking at weekly candles. Now you can look, look at daily candles as well. But with weekly candles, you can better see the wave patterns. So right now you can see this is a wave up. That's a wave down. And we are right now in a wave up, okay? So eventually this wave up will end and then we have the next wave down. And if you take this as the start of this wave up, we call that A and the end of this wave up, we call that B, and the end of, or rather the, the bottom of this wave down, that's called C. Now, if you use Fibonacci, you realize that this is actually a Fibonacci level. So A, B, C, and we can use a Fibonacci extension tool to kind of like project roughly where is the top of this new wave up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna take out my Fibonacci tool, extension tool over here and I start with clicking on A, drag it to B, drag it to C, boom, okay, there we are. So we're looking for the 100% mark, there we are, that's the 100% mark and oops, looks like we just almost touched that uh, in this weekly candle, right, which is 4903. So based on this uh, extension tool, we could be near the top of the US market. Now, again, remember, you know, this is not an absolute 100% certainty. It's, it's just a guesstimate. It's just a probability. So I think if you ask me, we are somewhere near the top over here. Okay. Um, now, what is interesting to note is that we just crossed the all-time high uh, that was made back in 2022 over there. 
So if I were to draw a line, you can see that was the previous all-time high. And then we went into that bear market in 2022, and we just exceeded that all-time high. Now, usually when a new bull market exceeds the all-time high prior to the bear market, we do usually get a bit of a correction and pullback before the bull market continues. If you take a look at, for example, the previous previous bear market, that was the 2020 bear market. Let's take a look at what happened. So this was the previous high. And that was, of course, the bear market of 2020. And then over here, you can see, yep, it exceeded, uh, exceeded that previous high. And after it exceeded the previous high, it went a bit higher and then it went into a correction before the bull market continued. So this could uh, well happen again. This particular correction was roughly about a 10% drop before the bull market continued. So um, if we base it on that, then we could expect that the S&P corrects down to about this blue line over here. That's the 40 EMA. Uh, that would roughly be about a 10% drop. Let me just mark it with this line over there, right? About 4465. Um, that would be roughly about a 10% drop, you know, plus or minus, right? But again, like I said, up to 10%. It may not drop to 10%. It may just drop to 5 or 6%, which would be somewhere at this red dotted line over here which is the 20 EMA on weekly candles. There. So now it looks a bit messy. Let me just remove the Fibonacci extension so you can better see where are my targets, right? So my first target, if we do get, is not if, but when we do get a, a pullback or correction, my first target would be 4590 at the 20 EMA, which by the way, also coincides with the previous swing high. So that is a significant level of resistance and support. And the next level of support, which it could uh, pull back down to, it would be about 4465, which would be about the 40 EMA. And if it's even deeper, then the next support level would be the 50 moving average on weekly candles, which is 4361. Now, again, when the market pull, pulls back, it is impossible to know exactly where is the end of the correction but we can identify potential support levels. So if you're a trader, you're watching these levels and the moment the market goes to a level and you see a bullish reversal pattern, like a bullish candlestick pattern, then you could, for example, take a long trade at that level. But if it breaks through that level, you're waiting for the next level. Again, you're waiting for a bullish, you know, confirmation candlestick pattern and then you would enter at that level. So we're watching these three levels. So again, what does this mean for you as an investor and as a trader? Now, if you are an investor and there are many high quality stocks that you missed out buying, for example, Microsoft or Nvidia and stuff like that, and you want to buy, um, I wouldn't buy right now because you, know, you don't wanna buy after wave up. You don't wanna chase the girl once the girl has run away. You always wanna wait patiently for the girl to run back to you into your loving arms when there's fear and there's panic, right? So once again, when we get that pullback or that correction, it's a great opportunity for investors to accumulate shares of high quality companies that should be right now on your watch list. So that'll be a great opportunity. Now, at the same time, if you are a short term trader, you don't want to be chasing a stock right now. Now's the worst time to jump into Nvidia, the worst time to jump into Meta, the worst time to jump into all these stocks that have made these extended gains. You want to wait for a retracement. Now, if you're a trader, you want to wait for it to retrace to a significant support level and wait for a bullish candlestick pattern to confirm a potential bottom. You can also look at some uh, indicators like you know, oversold stochastics or oversold Williams percentage R or Bollinger Band, something to give you an additional edge that it is prime for a reversal. Now, that's when it comes to you know, entering the market. Then some people say, Adam, what if I'm already in the market? I already own these stocks. Are you saying that I should sell right now because it is near the top? It really depends. Again, if you are trading short term, you're into short term swing trades, then yes, I think now would be a good time to start scaling out your position. Maybe not selling everything, but selling me half or a third. And then, you know, scaling out once, especially you see a bearish candlestick pattern close on the weekly candles, then you could get out everything. That is if you're a trader. Now, 
if you are an investor of high quality companies, great companies that will continue to grow and compound over the next 5, 10, 15 years, then should you sell in a bull market just because you expect a correction? Well, I don't, right? So as you guys know, a big part of my portfolio, I'm holding great companies for the long run. These are my investments. In, I invest in Nvidia, Meta, Microsoft, and all that. So even though I do expect a pullback or correction suit, I ain't selling shit. Okay, I'm not selling them because I don't care if it goes out in the short term because I'm holding them for the next 5, 10, 15 years where I know they're going to 5, 10x, right? But having said that, because I know that they are a bit overextended and they are likely going to pull back or at least consolidate, I'm making some money out of it by selling covered call options. So I make some premium as they consolidate or as they pull back. Uh, in, in the short term. Right? A common question I always get is, Adam, why don't you just sell now because it looks a bit overextended and then just buy it back later when it drops? And the problem is that, like for example, NVIDIA, let's look at NVIDIA. Now I own NVIDIA and NVIDIA is a company I plan to hold for many, many years because I think that it's, it'll continue to dominate in the AI space and there's a lot more growth potential ahead. But again, you can see right now, it's gone a bit uh, parabolic. So we may get a bit more and then likely you're gonna have a, a correction down and then it continues up. So again, common question is why don't I sell now? Because I, I own shares, right? Why don't I sell now and then after it drops, buy it back? You know, it doesn't make sense. Now, of course, it sounds good in theory, but the problem is in reality, when you do that, sometimes you are not able to get back in at a lower price because it's always difficult to time the exact top and the exact bottom of a correction. You never know, right? And there's always a risk that, you know, if I sell now, the bastard could keep going up and I go, ah, right? And then even, and if I sell here, for example, and it keeps going up and eventually it corrects down, it may still not drop below where I sold it and then it goes up again. So I can't get back in unless I pay a much higher price. And if you do that in the long run, it reduces the returns, your potential returns of holding a great company. Now, there are also times when, you know, after I sell it over here, it goes down and I go, yes, I feel good about myself. I say, I'm gonna buy it back. And I say, okay, I'm gonna buy it back when it drops to, let's say this level, right? That's my target. But just before it gets to my buy level, it suddenly shoots up and again, it goes off without me. And that's always the risk of trying to jump out and jump back into the markets. That's the risk that you, 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 get, you get shaken out of great companies. And that's why I don't do it. If I find that it's a great company, you continue to grow, I don't sell, I just hold it through the ups and downs and I just ignore the short-term volatility. Now, will there be reasons as an investor that you do want to sell? And the answer is yes. You will want to sell if you need the money. So if for some reason you have no more cash to invest and you do expect there's a correction in the next two or three months, but you've got no more cash to invest, sure, you could sell right now. But if you don't need the cash, like for me, I, I have got more cash coming in from my savings. I don't need to sell to get cash. But if I do need the cash, I'll sell now. So it really depends on that situation. Now, at the same time, if you happen to be on margin, I know some people, they, they buy a trade on margin, which I never ever uh, encourage, right? But if you're someone who's bought on margin and now you're sitting on a lot of profits, I would sell right now. I would sell enough to reduce my margin to zero. Or if for some reason you need the cash for something, you need the cash to pay medical bills or your you know, children's education, yeah, you want to sell now at a high. You don't want to sell after it drops to a low. Okay, so it really depends on your individual situation. So for my core investments in great companies, I'm not selling. But for my short-term trades, I have been taking profits. In fact, those of you in my UIP community, you've been getting a lot of my take profit notifications in the last week. I'm taking profit, taking profit, I'm getting out of the market for my short-term trades. But for the long-term investments, I'm staying invested because I know that they're going to keep growing over the next five to 10 years. And I am looking, for, looking forward to the next uh, five, ten percent drop in the markets in the next couple of weeks or or March, where I will then you know add even more and build bigger stakes in these companies. Let's go back to China. Now I got the U.S. market right last year when I said the bull market began. And I got it right, but you know what? I got China wrong. Well, in a way, I got it right, <laughs> but 
my right didn't last for very long. So if, if you guys recall back in uh, late 2022, uh, the Chinese market bottomed at that point of time and it entered a bull market. And I said, China's in a new bull market, which was true. Uh, the bull market lasted for a few days and then pff, it went back into another bear market. Right? So China's kind of like this old man on Viagra. It, it, it can't stand to the next day. It, it, it like softens the day itself. So, sorry, sorry kids. Anyway, so China, um, it's like going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. It like, it's like, but you know what? Something interesting, China, uh, as, as far as the Hang Seng Index is concerned, it has not yet breached the lows of 2022. At least it has not, right? But something interesting happened. In the last uh, three days, we had a 10% move in the Chinese markets because uh, it seems the Chinese government has had enough. They say, enough is enough. Our market is going to shit. We're going to do something. So they pulled out the big guns. So they are getting desperate and the Chinese government has now begun to talk about a rescue package backed by $278 billion to save the stock market, to pump it up, all right? So it says over here, the policymakers are seeking to mobilize 2 trillion Chinese yen, 278 billion US dollars, mainly from the offshore accounts of Chinese state-owned enterprises as part of a stabilization fund to buy shares onshore through the Hong Kong exchange link, said the people asked not to be identified or they may get killed. I'm just kidding. They have also earmarked at least 300 billion yen of local funds to invest in onshore shares through Chinese a China Securities Finance Corp. So basically, the Chinese government is telling, you know, their institutions, start buying Chinese stocks. And they also told the hedge funds in China, you're not allowed to short Chinese stocks as well. They did something else. Yesterday, they came up with a policy to cut the um, reserve requirement ratios of banks. So banks have more liquidity and they can lend more. Now, what's also interesting is that one of the things that spouted this recent drop again, as you guys know, that got me really fed up, was the Chinese government came out with new regulations on online gaming. They said, we're going to restrict online gaming and stuff like that, going against their word that they were done with the regulations. Now, it's, it now so happens that the regulatory body that came out with these new gaming regulations went against the state government's policy to stop regulating. So that guy got fired. And now that online game management regulation has been removed from the website. So what it now seems is that the Chinese government is really serious of not regulating anymore. They want to attract in foreign investors to come back. They want to pump up the market. But the problem is that the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. So that's what the uh, central government is saying, but the local governments, the other regulatory bodies are still doing this shit. So they are working that stuff out. But it's a good sign in the right direction that now they are serious to really get the market and economy going. They have to because it's in a death spiral right now. Also interesting is that in the surprising show of confidence, Jack Ma, who's the founder of Alibaba, has recently purchased $50 million worth of Alibaba shares together with Joe Tsai, who purchased $150 million worth of the company's shares. Joe Tsai is the current chairman of Alibaba. So now Joe Tsai and Jack Ma are the largest shareholders of Alibaba, bigger than the previous major shareholder, SoftBank. So with all these new developments, has the Chinese market finally bottomed? Is this rally now sustainable? Or is it just the old man on Viagra that's going to only last for one night? Well, it's too early to tell right now. For me to confirm and call a bottom, I need to either see a double bottom pattern or I need to see a confirmation of a new uptrend. So what do I mean? So a double bottom pattern means I need to see that the previous bottom, which was October 2022 over here, I need to see a breach of that low. I need to see the market go below this level and close back above it with a bullish candlestick pattern on the weekly candles. That would be a double bottom reversal pattern that would signal, signal a bottom. Or if I see from where we are now, a change in trend. So to see a change in trend, I need to see the moving averages begin to slope up and begin to cross over. So for that, if I go to the daily candles over here, now, if you take a look at the daily candles, you can see 
it is still clearly on a downtrend, right? Wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. So it's still making lower highs, lower highs and lower lows. So what's the definition of a new uptrend? You need to see higher highs and higher lows, all right? So in other words, this 10% jump in the last few days is not enough. In fact, it's not even at the 50 moving average. It's not even breaching that previous high over here. I need to see it go up above this previous high, right? And then drop above this previous low. So it makes a higher high and higher low. And then a new high, a new low, and then we can confirm a new change in trend. That is not that has not happened yet. We are still at the early stages. So I'm watching this very, very carefully. Now, besides watching higher highs and higher lows, we can also use the moving averages to confirm a change in trend. So the first is to look at the 20 and 40 exponential moving averages. This is the red line over there. That's the 20. And the blue line is the 40 EMA. Now, again, we need the 20 to cross above the 40 to confirm the short-term uptrend. That has not even happened any time in the last couple of months, right? The 20 remains below the 40, and if that happens, the downtrend continues. We need to see the 20 cross above the 40. That's step one, short-term uptrend. And eventually, we need to see this 50 moving average, this blue line, cross back above the green line, right? If you can have that crossover, and they both start sloping up, then that would confirm the new bull market. So we are still far away from that, we're at the early stages, we have to watch and see how this develops. So do these new developments change my view on Chinese stocks? No, I'm still keeping the same view, which means in the short term, yes, the market is very oversold. Yes, it's very undervalued. So I do expect there should be a bounce. There should be a uh, mean reversion, uh, at least back to, this is by the way, the long-term chart of the Hang Seng. I expect right now we are here, right? I do expect we should rebound back to at least the 200-day moving average on the monthly candles, which would represent, let's see, represent roughly about a, um, let me use that measuring tool over there. That would represent about a 56% uh, bounce from the current level, right? 56% up to there. And eventually, to at least bounce back to the 50 moving average on the monthly candles, which would represent roughly about 85%, okay? So yeah, I do expect, again, short to medium term, we should bounce back here and bounce back there in the short to medium term. However, over the long run, I am not bullish on China. In the long run, I remain a lot more bullish on the US markets. So um, currently, I've got about less than 4% of my portfolio in Chinese equities. Like I mentioned, I'm not adding any more shares to it. I'm just holding my position. And once I can see that bounce back to the uh, mean, I will start to probably exit all my positions because you know, long run, I don't think that I can get the best returns in the Chinese market. I think in the long run, the US markets will give me much more consistent and predictable returns. So these are just some of my preliminary thoughts in the market outlook event that's gonna happen this weekend, which will be 27 January, 7 p.m. Pacific time, or Singapore time would be 28 January, 11 a.m., or US Eastern time, New York time, 27 January, 10 p.m. I'll be going a lot more into detail about what sectors, what stocks I'm looking at, as well as a lot more information about what to expect for the rest of the year. So you can grab your free tickets by clicking on the link in the description box below. So I look forward to seeing you there. Till then, may the markets be with you. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.